Who's Lara Croft? I have no idea. She's not just another woman. If I actually really think about Lara Croft, I actually question my sanity. Lara brought me immense success and, and changed my life. Lara Croft is the heroine of Tomb Raider, one of the most successful computer games of all time. With 26 million copies sold to date, Lara Croft is richer than the Queen of England. She's appeared on more magazine covers than a supermodel. The advertising industry can't get enough of her. The government used Lara to promote British technology across the world. She's the star of a multi-million dollar Hollywood blockbuster. And what's more, she's British. Lara Croft's story is an explosive tale of world domination and raw sex appeal. Lara Croft's adventures take her to Far Eastern temples and Egyptian pyramids, but her origins are far more humble. I'm a big girl now. Hit me with the bad news. Not many global superstars hail from Derby. It is bad news. A small industrial city better known for its brickworks and bone china than for being the birthplace of Lara Croft. This place gives me the creeps. Lara's story begins in 1995, with the doodlings of a young Derby-based designer. This is before any work has begun on the game, before we have, there's anyone else on the game except me, basically. It was very clear that I wanted to make uh, it a feminine character, so to be feminine, I had to exaggerate feminine characteristics. So, for a start, gave her long hair, but the only way that we could represent that in a game in any conceivable way would be to give her a ponytail. To make her seem athletic, I wanted to give her uh, um, basically a leotard, okay? Because she's an adventurer, we needed to give her something to put her goods and chattels in, so a backpack had to be strapped onto her back, you know? So that was fine. Toby Guard said, well, you know, I've got this idea for this, um, uh, game of, of sort of going into tombs and, and pyramids and it's like, oh, that sounds pretty interesting. The uh, walking boots going on at the bottom. The double gun holsters, we clearly had to have her having that. It's the way the uh, straps go across the legs, which sort of make their whole um, leg more interesting. Got a call in my office, Jeremy, could have a look, you know, got, got a new character, went down. But it was this female character and I was like, wow, Toby, that's, that's a pretty big change. Everything about um, Lara was to exaggerate her female-ness. Yeah, so then that's basically how the final design looks. As Toby started working her up and making her, doing, you know, refining her and animating her, and it's like, wow, this really could actually work. Right from the start, Lara had killer looks and a killer attitude. Dangerous weaponry combined with dynamic curves. Major features are kind of there. She's got the long hair and she's got the two guns. The game was a, was a, was a monster hit, obviously. When that game came out, it was really the first full 3D interactive game that people had seen. It was such a move from that that's kind of flat Mario, Sonic, pseudo kind of 3D game where you used to fly around and do things into this environment where you could control, for the first time ever again, a character that you could believe in. When Tomb Raider was released in 1996, it was a sensation and not just in teenage bedrooms. Its sexy, sassy heroine had caught the public's imagination. Lara Croft wasn't just a character in a game. She was a celebrity, and people wanted to know more. 
I, I love to say that, Kate, that, that Laura's history was a, you know, a, a genius sort of idea. I mean, it was literally, um, as people began to sort of know the game and, and, the, and the press were looking at the game, and that the, suddenly they're asking questions about Laura. And, you know, where, Laura, where, where, where was she educated? And when's her birthday? The character that we originally had was called um, Laura Cruz. So we thought, well, why don't we make the character British? Step up the lip, top hole and all that. And why don't we just make her not only British, but make her really British, give her a great education. She's from a very, you know, well-to-do family. She's had, you know, a very privileged upbringing. And Laura Cruz was changed to Laura Croft. Ah, the charming Mr. Larson. She was a sort of an Emma Peel type character from uh, The Avengers, you know, very strong world, you know, an, an attractive lady going out there, a, a, a sort of a go-getter. Crawled out from under your rock, I see. No need for unpleasant. No, not pushy. She had a coyness about it. There was this soft feminine side to her. Easy come, easy go. And so we breached the sanctum of the ancients. The first footfalls in this tomb for centuries. Lara's enthusiasm for exploration, the design team decided that she had developed it at school. Where is our destination? Our destination is Egypt. Now, I did promise that I would take you on field work. I'll take you to the tombs and also to the Valley of the Kings at Luxor. And then I'll take you by four-wheel drive across into the Sinai, then by camel across the desert. Would you like to go? And where else but Gordonston, the exclusive public school in the wilds of the Scottish Highlands, famed for its bold, adventuring spirit. Built under the pyramids, and later still, they were built down in the Valley of the Kings. Gordonston was where Prince Charles and Prince Philip were educated. So why not Lara Croft? Ben? Should they keep preserved? Well done, they keep preserved. Why would they want to do that anyway? How many of you want to be preserved? When I hear the name Lara Croft, the very first thing that always comes to my mind is the Gordonston School motto. Plus est en vous, there is more in you than you think, because I'm sure that wherever she is in the world, whatever she is doing, that is what is going through her mind as she meets new challenges. There is more in you than you think. You are an exemplary student, Lara, although you have not yet learned the root of all adventuring, the craving to win. She was slightly before my time, but in fact she was here in probably in the mid-1980s, so although her reputation lived on, I hadn't had the opportunity to meet her personally. And you will not deviate from my instruction. It's quite a kind of outward bound school. It's really and we do get quite a lot of old yeah. girls like climbing Mount Everest and things like that. Go! This is merely an appetizer for the perils ahead. The mission statement of the school is Gordonston prepares students for a full and active role as international citizens in a changing world. Now, doesn't that just encapsulate all that Lara does? <laughs> It was an elegant mixture of brains and breeding. But of course, what really set the public's pulses racing was simple, sex. <laughs> Lara's phenomenal success wasn't just about a cracking adventure. Other games did that too. Lara had something which hooked gamers like nothing had before. At the centre of Tomb Raider was a fantasy female figure, and that figure didn't come from physical education classes at Gordonston. Each of her provocative curves was as much part of the game as the tombs she raided. A fact which isn't lost on some of her admirers. 
You doing. can follow her ass. You can look at her tits. Yeah, yeah. they know what they're you doing. Can I think they, you know, they're manipulating the you genes. Know. Really, they know what they're doing. And if you pan the camera around, you can get really close up to, up to her ass and on her uh, and uh, everywhere else. <laughs> Lara had a secret weapon in the world of computer game heroes. Well, two of them. Breasts. <laughs> Pamela Anderson, really, but twice as big. When I hear the name Lara Croft, the first thing that comes to mind is probably the size of her chest. <laughs> if I'm honest. The first thing that comes into my mind, tits. Honest, but true. She's got an um, enormous chest <laughs> on her. Enormous breasts. If Lara came into my shop, I would basically say she needs to be very well supported. I mean, her biggest um, discussion point were, were the size of her breasts. She's quite busty, so she's got to be held really well. People were so not used to seeing a girl in a game. So the first thing they homed in on was the boobs. And it was like, woof. But everybody that kept like, coming up and seeing, they go, wow, she's so big. So we'd have to make a sport, and somebody go, well, no, you know. And, and it was just ridiculous that you, you can't believe how many different sizes she actually went through. <laughs> support the bust and give her a really good shape. You don't want her bouncing around while she's shooting lines and jumping over mountains and things, so you've got to have her really well supported. And, and, and the game they, they, in yeah. each game, In each game, yeah. her breasts have changed size, haven't but, they? And yeah, I've always yeah, thought yeah, the only reason she's got a bloody knapsack is to balance her out. Yeah. She's going to topple over. <laughs> Let's try the lunchbox. They're just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. That's not what the company says. As we've got better uh, and the technology's got better, we've had the ability to put more, um, more pieces into Laura, if you like, which in turn makes her look a little bit more real, but also gives her a little bit more shape. I can actually move these around to get the shape just the way I want Laura to look. This perfect virtual woman takes shape under the watchful eye of her designers. It's they who teach her all her moves. The model you see on the left here is the, the version of Lara that we've used in-game up until now. Um, each square that you see there is called a polygon. And in this model, there's around 400 of these polygons which make up the Lara Croft. On the right, what you see is the new next generation Lara Croft. Um, as you can see there, there's far more polygons being used in this model. There's now around 4,000 polygons. So that's a tenfold increase in the amount of detail we have on Lara. The way we actually create that animation is we actually create a skeleton inside the character, which pretty much represents a, a human skeleton. Everyone wants to really see Lara as most realistically and believably as, as they can. Lara may be no more than software and polygons, but to some people, the emotions she inspires are very real. When I started to play the game for the first time, I sort of like was, I sort of like became, fell in love with her. I suppose I still am. Her image and the way she moved through the game, it was that. She's got this uh, amazing figure and this uh, beautiful accent and uh, she's uh, quite perfect. And you aren't going to find that in reality, so you, there's no point looking for it. 
I've been on dates with all kinds of people, but I've never met anybody like Lara. Most of the dates I've been on aren't as pretty as Lara. Um, and the good thing about Lara is that she's always there. Maybe that's part of the aspect to me liking Lara, is that at least she's um, reliable. But I would love to meet someone like Lara. But it's probably impossible. If, if by contrast, she was modelled on uh, Anne Widdicombe or Claire Shaw. Uh, people would be more inclined to shoot her. In the real world, Lara is the perfect virtual woman. She's not just like portrayed as a bimbo, you know, she's like very smart, well educated, travels all around the world, you know, and then she looks great as well. So, what more? Hey, she's the perfect woman. <laughs> <laughs> That's why she's not real, because no one in real life is perfect. No one, I don't think so. I mean, no one in real life is perfect. That's why it's so great that you can have a perfect virtual character. Is it just her perfection that draws people to Lara? Maybe it's the way she moves, or perhaps the fact that you're the one moving her. I think she's one of the main characters, only, only characters in the game that utilises every single button on the controller. You do actually feel like you have, and maybe this is another reason people like playing Lara so much. You know, you do have such control of her. You really feel like you can make her do anything from the splits to running, jumping, forward leaping, side leaping, and she's terribly, you know, she's very malleable. You really can get inside her body and, and, and sort of manipulate her. People believed that they were controlling the character and they felt for Lara. You know, when she fell from a high ledge and her legs ah, cracked as she hit the ground type thing, you know, they actually felt it themselves. No prizes for you this time, Lara. There was this nurturing feeling that we were trying to install in the player. You're not worried about me. Yes, somebody has to. Touching, but don't wait up. Lara is a character in a computer game that you can care for, feel for. A perfect woman you can control with the touch of a button. Or is she controlling you? When Tomb Raider was released, stories started emerging of how obsession with the game and Lara Croft had started taking over people's lives. When The Fat of the Land, an album by The Prodigy, had its release delayed, who was to blame? Lara Croft. There was... <laughs> There was, I mean, obviously there was phone calls every day of how's it going and stuff like that. The managing director of it, he used to ring all the time. At the end of the day, if you told him it was going all right, then that was cool. Yeah, as far as he was concerned, we were in the studio, but uh, we weren't. We were dabbling with Lara Croft. You know, you just couldn't get off it. It was an addiction. You can't explain it. You know, there's no such thing as a quick go on Lara Croft. I'd be on there, sort of, you know, till five, six in the morning some nights, and they'd totally ruin the pattern of my life. You know, and then Liam would be ringing me up. Oh, yeah, you know, I'm in the cavern, and uh, I can't find the gold. And uh, there's a giant hand in the room, and, uh, and I'll be all oh, right, right, you better speak to Sophie. She's done that bit. I used to get people ringing me up. All right, this is Lee, and I'll be, yeah, Lee who? And, oh, a friend of Charlie's. I'm, I'm like, yeah. So, like, there's just people, um, you know, that I hardly knew sort of ringing me up, 
stupid times in the night. If people put as much effort into um, life and learning things as they do trying to get a, conquer that game, you know what I mean? They'd all have better jobs and get on a lot further. <laughs> It wasn't just pop stars who fell prey to her charms. Lara Croft even took the rap for goalkeeping gaffes. In a crucial match between Newcastle and Liverpool, England goalie David James was in far from top form. He let in three howlers. Again, it was all down to Lara. Lara, Sarah, Schmal, whatever her name is. I never ever heard this woman in my whole monster life until this shtick when that schmuck David James, bless him, I should say that, I've made a few quid out of him, letting those terrible goals against Newcastle. <laughs> I'm there as a commercial monster football agent to make money, make my you know poor players richer, my rich players richer. And that day my rich player was getting poorer. <laughs> because he was up all night playing with that game. And he was bad that day. Bubbler was he bad? That day should have been played for Liverpool Street, not Liverpool Town. <laughs> I honestly, a Jewish word Emmer to God's truth, I actually thought he said he was up all night with Tom Raider. And I just thought, you know, maybe he's uh... <laughs> There you go. There you go. I think you'd rather forget it. Fools! The prophet woman has outsmarted you, yeah? Each night, I beat myself rid of these fantasies. But it is indeed a test. Countless wives and girlfriends around the world, Lara Croft has become the other woman, as James Bosher knows only too well. I need concentration to play it, sitting down with the lights off, the TV on, and especially looking at Lara as well, didn't you, really? <laughs> oh, don't. I mean, at first, it really did bother me in playing Tomb Raider all the time. You know, I was like, oh, you're playing with Lara Croft again. So how are we going to go and play with Lara again, are you? You know, any spare time we'd had, normally we would spend together, but now he's playing Tomb Raider, you know, and I would just be sitting there quite bored. Bores Kelly to bits. He would say, are you OK? I'm going, yeah, it's all right, you know. He tended I enjoyed it just so I could be with him, really. But Lara Croft was in between of us. No, no, no. Look, at, look at the girl swimming, look. When Kelly was pregnant, and uh, I was playing it non-stop. Uh, I actually booked a week off work, Monday to Friday, just to play it. But he's never took five days off to be solely with me, but he's took five days off to play with Lara Croft, which is a bit worrying at times. But it took me 11 months to complete the second one, so I know the third and the fourth one probably take me even longer. Now it's something I've just got used to, really. That's men, I suppose. <laughs> their little fixations on things. But I'm sure he fancies me more than her, so it doesn't really worry me so much. Some people take their love for Lara and Tomb Raider to the extreme. Every one of the tattoos on John Sanderson's body is from the game. And the star of the show is Lara. Somebody's sticking a needle in you and dragging it down your arm. They we all suffer for a cause, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> you like the person, you like the picture, you just have it done. 
the moment there's only one arm in my back that's been tattooed, but there's plenty of room. You will get more of them. Yeah, it's possible, but... It'll always be very personal. I'm not too bothered what anybody else thinks about it. She's OK, I mean, she's pretty easy. Easy to go on with. <laughs> Okay, there you go, mate. Right, nice one. Yeah, great. All right. Yeah, well Happy done. With it, yeah. yeah, it's nice, mate. Thank you. Yep, yeah, that's the next one done. Um, um, it's nice to know I've always got to have a pretty girl on my arm as well. <laughs> ah, Miss Croft. If Lara could convince you to have a tattoo, surely she could convince you to part with your money. You see, with your lifestyle, you'd be the perfect campaign for my products. The advertising Lara was born. Lara's almost moved outside the game now. She, she's, she's sort of gone mainstream. Got Lara Croft, the PR girl, who's completely different. And she's really, really <laughs> willing to please. And she's, you know, she'll sit there and blow kisses at whoever kind of wants it. She doesn't drink, she doesn't smoke, she's got a pretty clean living livelihood, okay, she goes and kills things, but that, but that, that kind of counterbalances the other side of, of, of the clean living side. The one advantage we have with, with Lara is that she doesn't have a history, she, she hasn't done anything wrong, so therefore she's never going to disappoint. She's never one day going to come on the TV or a computer game and say, well, actually, I did this when I was 18, and everyone goes, <gasps> Companies all over the world have latched onto her unique selling points. She has qualities that flesh and blood superstars can never match. Spartacus. Selection. When Lara's out there selling Lucasade and she's there in the dome and she's there on the front of the face, people get sick of her. People have been really. I think that I just think that the cult, that culture's been really saturated. It's not just mega brands that have bought into Lara, it's mega bands too. A phone call came in and said, uh, it's sort of you two here. Um, we'd love to use Lara and Lara's image and what Lara represents uh, on our latest U2 uh, uh, pop tour. And it sort of uh, put the phone down and pinch yourself a little bit. You know, wow, this is, you know, here is, you know, an icon of, of the pop industry, U2, wanting to take, you know, a, a, a character that we've created. And it was a fantastic experience. You know, they were they saw Lara for for an icon uh, of the 20th century. With Lara's sex appeal being sold around the world, it was hardly surprising that some people in darkened rooms would try and see a bit more of her. What is it, man? What have you found? The internet became the place people could see what, until now they'd only imagined. Feast your eyes on this, Lara. Uh -huh. Could this be the very first computer-generated character that, that has had her clothes removed? Uh, it could be. Pass it, pass it to me. We've found her. You can uh, download a patch from uh, the internet and that removes all the clothes apart from the gun belt. Some things are best left to their slumber. I know this one called Boo Braider and uh, I know they superimpose uh, someone else's body onto Lara's face. Apparently you've got to get to a certain part in, in a certain level. Uh, keep jumping her back and forward, and uh, apparently she takes her clothes off. Obviously, she was a, an easy target on media like the internet for people to go changing our pictures and, you know, doing things that we didn't agree with, and we were very, very aggressive in the early days in trying to stump that out. Lara saw enough of the power of this artefact to recognise its rightful place was where man could never again misuse it. She goes around shooting people in all the games. 
she um, takes uh, precious artifacts, which is classified as theft, and she ventures into um, other people's property, which is trespassing. <coughs> She's broken three fundamental laws, and including murder. <coughs> It's funny how that can be acceptable uh, to the uh, game industry, but it's not acceptable for her to be uh, nude. When he gets to some kind of perverse act, that then it's like, whoa, hold on a second. I wouldn't advise it. We will protect her um, to the death. No need for unpleasantries, Miss Croft. Who's to say someone isn't going to make a uh, blue movie, not just a feature film? And of course, I'd probably rent that name, me. Lara Croft is so real to some of her fans that it's only a short step to seeing her in the flesh, or being her in the flesh. I had the afternoon off with a friend, and we were playing her boyfriend's PlayStation machine with the Tomb Raider game that he'd just got. I wanted to go to a fancy dress party and I was trying to think of a theme and she said, my God, why don't you, you know, you're so like her anyway, why don't you go as Lara Croft? The more I thought about it and certainly the more I learned about the character, I found there were a number of surprising similarities actually with the biography that they've written for, for the character and, and my own life. So I put a costume together that I was very proud of, went along to this fancy dress night and I must admit it went down a storm. The theme was Egyptian. I was surprised, actually, that nobody else had had the same idea. I was the only Lara Croft there. Well, this is essentially the classic costume. This is the first top that I bought. It's basically the key attributes to the character. You've got her ponytail, of course, uh, the trademark sunglasses, uh, the leather backpack, uh, and the gun belt with the brass buckle, uh, and the two revolvers, of course. So it's, uh, and I say, I keep it on a mannequin because it's kind of, kind of fun. <laughs> My second costume was the Tomb Raider 3 costume, which she wears Area 51 section, which is the blue combat, it's a little grey crop top, again with the backpack and the gun belt. I then also, with Tomb Raider 3, I got the Arctic outfit. I thought I needed a Lara costume I could wear during the winter as well. And perhaps my favourite, which is the from Tomb Raider Chronicles, the black cat suit with the headset microphone and the sunglasses as well. Well, I must admit, I've had to de dedicate this whole cupboard to it, and uh, there's one or two other costumes that she has that I haven't quite got together yet, another jacket and a couple of tops and shorts. So I'm hoping to get the full range. It'll be my, uh, that will be my collection complete. Lara certainly knew how to paint the town red. And I must admit, actually, the Lara Croft costume is it's a very good thing for, uh, for going clubbing in. It does make people stop and stare. Particularly if they've had a few drinks and they've been celebrating, they, they cannot believe their eyes. Something that they've stared at her rear end for the last five years has actually come to life. They do tend to come up to you, but normally after a usually cheesy line, um, they don't really know what to say. They are a little bit taken aback. Lara Croft is a lady. She's, you know, she's, she's polite. She would never be rude to anyone. She wouldn't be aggressive to anyone unless they threatened her. So certainly, I tend to be very polite, but politely say no. Some women, obviously of a certain persuasion, actually find the character quite sexy as well, perhaps in the same way as men do. I've had offers from both, both sides of the fence um, when I've dressed up as the character, so it's obviously a universal uh, fantasy figure.
people always ask me, um, what do I, particularly when I'm out clubbing, or what have you got in your backpack? Because they half expect me to have all the things that Lara Croft carries. And I do indeed have a medical pack, um, a fizzy drink, and, uh, and even these night flares. But the most uh, useful thing that i found that I keep in here is one of these space blankets, which means that you don't have to take a coat when you go to a nightclub and queue up for the cloakrooms. Um, but you've got this, and if you're waiting for a taxi at 2 o'clock in the morning, you can wrap yourself up in this aluminium blanket, and it keeps you really warm. Miss Croft did enjoy her little games. Some people dress as Lara for a hobby. Others do it as a job. Lucy Clarkson is one of a succession of official Lara Croft look-alike models who represent the character at trade fairs and product launches. The number one rule has always been that the look-alike model, Lara Croft, can't speak in costume. It, it seems bizarre to have such a rule, but it was our only way of controlling and making people realise that Lara Croft is not real. It's, you know, down to me to ensure that the guns are held correctly. It's one of the first things that people will spot a mile away if a, a gun is facing down. But it's down to me and to the model to ensure that it's held almost like a man or someone with experience. Lara Weller was the official Lara Croft lookalike model in 1999. I was supposed to do the movements right. There was this particular way of, you know, taking your guns out and the walk. I mean, she stands in, in a particular way. <gasps> I was not allowed to drink or eat in public. I wasn't allowed to talk as Lara Croft. The real Lara Croft it actually was quite hard to live up to. I personally don't think any model could be a Lara Croft look-alike. The catwalk models, they're very slim, very waif-like. Often these girls are so, so slim that, the, you know, there aren't any kind of assets there. Your physique is kind of the first strongest aspect that we're looking for in, in every girl. She needs to have the athletic build, the, the strength, the definition in, in the body, obviously the certain assets. We're looking at something kind of, you know, the legs slightly apart along the lines of a cowboy, but putting that kind of soft, sexy, feminine touch to it. They just stand next to me, have their picture taken with me, and I give them my signature, the special Lara Croft signature, and they just, oh, I never throw this picture away in my life. A lot of men, they, you know, when they see the real life Lara Croft, I mean, you never know what's, what some men might do. Very very impressed, very impressed. It seems as if everybody loves Lara. Well, not quite everybody. <laughs> Phil Chapman, also known as Dr. Evil, dedicates his every waking hour to devising horrible ways to kill her. It's a nasty job, but someone's got to do it. Well, kill her! It's estimated that over half a billion hours have been devoted to playing Tomb Raider, most of them spent trying to keep Lara Croft alive. Lara isn't an indestructible superhero. She pays for your mistakes. <sighs> Dying is an intrinsic part of Lara's existence. Phil Chapman works at Core Design, Lara's parent company, but he has far from fatherly feelings towards her. He dreams up the ways to kill her. He's paid to see Lara dead. Oh. 
always thinking of ways to kill her. She's trying to save her. I'm trying to do her in. The actual, some of the ideas come from, I, it's not like from nightmares or anything like that. I just, it's just uh, somewhere in there. It's a sad day, Winston. She will live on forever in our hearts. Surely, Winston. Indeed, indeed. Soon after Tomb Raider, the computer game was released, her creator, Toby Gard, left the design company and walked away from millions. The first thing that springs to mind if you say Lara Croft is probably, for me, the feeling of loss. Because I left immediately after Tomb Raider and because that means I wasn't really there for when it really, really took off, I, I kind of feel sad in a way. I don't, I don't, I don't feel sad about the money because, I don't know, it's not really about the money. It's, it's not for me anyway. I just wanted to make a game that people would enjoy. I know that sounds really soppy, but it's true. I mean, money's nice. It can get you extra things, but it's, I don't know, I think that's what it's really about. I have to remain detached because I know I have no control over what happens whatsoever. It, it, I've given, given up on feeling protective about it because it just doesn't, the character just doesn't belong to me anymore. From a pencil sketch, she leapt to international fame, seducing us with her possibilities, blurring the boundaries between reality and imagination, always willing, always what you want her to be, always in your hands. But perhaps the real reason for her hold on us is that the real Lara Croft will always be just out of reach. <laughs> <laughs>